Howdy guys, I'm Jeep and Jason, and today in the Auto Edits Garage, I have a kind of a, another unique video. Times are a little weird right now, and I was kind of brainstorming on ways to kind of just help make a little bit of a difference and just get through this time and have some fun and do some good in the world. And so I'm gonna introduce you to a pretty special dude to me. He lives across the street from me. You know that red Toyota pickup truck, the Tacoma that you've seen in the back of a lot of my videos? Well, today we're gonna do a break, a full break upgrade on that. That thing. I'm going to introduce you to this guy. He's a cool dude. We're going to have some fun. He's going to learn how to work on his junk and a Toyota gets a new set of brakes, which is a great thing. And for full disclosure, I sent an email to my friends at PowerStop Brakes about this video and they sent this kid over. How cool is that? Now here's all the ingredients we're gonna throw on Garrett's truck. It's a 2000 Tacoma and it's a four x four and he's not really, you know, he doesn't have a lot of mechanical experience. So today's gonna be a good learning chance for everybody. And this is the kit we're gonna go with. I went with the Z36 Extreme Truck and Tow Package from PowerStop. I've been running it on my Jeep and on the truck for years. I'm very happy with this kit. No dust, uh, noticeable improved stopping and braking performance, so I like that. We're also gonna hook him up with the cross-drilled and slotted rotors because they look great. And in the back, that truck is a drum brake vehicle, so we're gonna go ahead and put some power stop drums on and a new set of power stop shoes on that thing. So let's go get them and bring that truck over here. All right, so now before I go and introduce you to my buddy Garrett over there, um, just to give you, this is the relationship. He's that guy, he lives right across the street. He's been the sucker that has had to deal with this living across. Um, hopefully it's not been too bad. How has it been okay? It's not terrible. Okay, it's not terrible. Uh, he's a great dude. Let, I can't wait for you to meet him. Let's get over there and check out his truck, meet Garrett. All right, guys, so here's Garrett. Now, we're not going to be high-fiving or hanging out because we're going to respect the physical distancing. That's uh, the responsible thing to be doing right now, but we are kind of quarantined on the same street, and we're kind of just having fun being as positive as we can in these times, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, okay. How are you hanging up in this? So far, so good. Good. Still alive, surviving the apocalypse. So. Yeah, I know. It's a bummer. <laughs> now, uh, have you done much mechanical stuff? No. No, so <laughs> mechanical, mechanical experience, not so much. Nope. Tell me about your truck, what is it? It's a 2000 Toyota Tacoma. All right. Uh, it's a TRD V6. Don't really know what all that means, but uh, I got it. So. All right, yeah, you, you got it. You <laughs> definitely got it. Uh, it's one of these cool trucks, like a lot of us old school 4x4ers dream about building up one of these trucks, and he doesn't even know how good a truck he's got. Uh, but one of these days, we're actually gonna go out on a little trail run and have some fun. And there's a lot of cool stories he's got to tell us. <laughs> let's get your thing into my garage and let's do the brakes. All right, let's All right. do it. Okay, <laughs> hop in. All right, bring that thing over. All right. Really quick, while he's getting that thing over here, let me give you my backstory with Garrett. I've lived on this street for a little over five years now, so I knew him when he was a kid, so I keep calling him a kid. He's a 21, 22 year old dude now, but he's always gonna be a kid in my head. You know, like my nephew and my nieces and nephews are always that way too, even though they're grown grown people now. Uh, he's a good kid, I can't wait for you to meet him. He trusts me with all his cars not to hit anything. Come on in. Hope I don't. Oh boy. Perfect. Straighten her out. Come on back. Come on back. And right about there should do her. Cool. So what I'm gonna do is lift it from a center cross member here. And then if you could grab me a couple of those jack stands and put those by the door. Yeah. All right. Something I always do when I put a vehicle on jack stands and I'm about to work under or near it, I just give it a little Hear that? How it's kind of settling into spot That makes there. sense. Yeah. <laughs> if it can't withstand that, you don't want to be under it. Uh, yes, I know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing, gr doing a great job. <laughs> there you go. Whoa. There you go. That's some serious power. Just like that. I'm yeah. doing it. I'm a regular pro. You are. He's a mechanic already. <laughs> we haven't even actually gotten near the brakes yet. <laughs> there you go. Now, let's just roll it out here in the drive-in. What we'll do is we'll do a tire rotation. So we'll keep it and then just slap, slap her down there. All right, if you're ready, I'm gonna go ahead and just do a quick disassembly on this side. And I always like to start because I'm a little 
obsessive this way about cleaning, so watch your eyeballs real quick. So I like to just get a quick clean up, wipe down. Your truck is in really, really good shape. People in the back east are gonna be so jealous of how good a shape your truck is in. I, I hear that a lot. Southern California <laughs> trucks, uh, yeah, are, are got it good here, so. We know it, folks, we know it. What I think is super embarrassing, I don't know diddly squat about vehicles, but my dad was a mechanic, and I don't, well, I just never got it, I guess. Well, it, you know, you didn't have to. You wanna know why? Because your dad was a mechanic. Oh, that makes sense. <laughs> Is that supposed to happen? <laughs> I met him when he was 16, right? About? Uh, yeah. yeah, And 16. about to graduate from high school, <laughs> and you had designs on going and running and walking the... Uh, the Pacific Crest Trail. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me why and how you decided to do that, because that's amazing to me. Um, I, I guess I needed something to do after high school. I didn't exactly want to go to college. Um, so I needed to do something, so I decided that walking from Mexico to Canada would be a good idea, and that's on the Pacific Crest Trail. It's 2,650 miles from the Mexican border to California, Oregon, Washington, finishing at the Canadian border. Now, I would have never <laughs> thought of that, or like, that just sounds like a heck of a lot of work. Like, it's, you know, a lot of people, how, what put that into your head to, to, to think that that would be something, uh, an achievement you want want to do? It sounded like a good idea. One time me and my dad were, we were looking at some maps and there's this thing called, so look, looking at one map, Pacific Crest Trail, and a couple days later we look at another map of a different area, Pacific Crest Trail, like that's weird, what is this thing? <laughs> so then we Google it, like oh, a trail that runs along the west coast. Um, and just the more we kind of started looking into it, like wow, that sounds really cool. You go through the deserts, of we're all still good there. Oh, hey, oh sorry. Yeah, I should have let you know. <laughs> <laughs> While you're telling us your yet. story, as I pulled the caliper off of the rotor here, the, the pads just fell out okay. of the ground. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to support this thing uh, so that it doesn't put any stress on this, this yeah. brake line right here. You don't want to hurt that rubber. That makes sense. It was inspirational <laughs> for me to see a young person like you um, kind of focus in on something, a goal like that, Make the plans, do the training, and achieve, and do it. And then we're going to go even farther because he did a bunch of other <laughs> mental stuff. Uh, <laughs> but so you saw the trail, you thought that was interesting, and how did you decide? Okay, I'm going to do that. Well, that's a good question. Uh, I guess I just started daydreaming about it, and just little by little, it became this. It's this I, a daydream to a dream to a reality. Just oh yeah, after high school, I'm going to. I'm gonna go hike it. Wow, I'm gonna man. do it. That, that's what's going to happen. That's right. I even tried to convince my mom to let me skip my high school graduation so I could get out on trail a year earlier in 2015, <laughs> but she said no and I couldn't do that. So I had to wait until 2016 to go. Good for mom. Go try walking Good about. Good for mom. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna just tap this. This is a little bit tight right here. There we go. <laughs> just hit it until it moves a little. Yeah, so what you're doing is <laughs> so what you're doing is you're just giving it a little bit of a tap to get it to just want to come off. If you notice here, this is again with the you're going to get sick of this even like the inside of these things just looks so pristine. <laughs> and you can actually see a little bit here this little dark patch right here, that's, it's actually kind of a fun way to tell what your brakes have been doing. So like right here, they're smooth. A lot of people with brake rotors this old will get grooves and uneven wear. This one's got a little bit hot at some point, um, and that's all that means, but otherwise it's in pretty good shape, so. But see the cracks oh, there? Yeah. So you needed that. And, and uh, what causes the cracks? Age, heat, so that's that bit of like there's a little there's a little bit of forensic files in all of this stuff. You're, you're too young to know what forensic files is, but but uh, there's a little bit of that in all this. So you can see that this these have a little few cracks. It's not a big deal when they're that minor, but uh, you know that it's this is a good thing that we're doing this. It's all it's all good. I so, try to not slam on the brakes too hard and try not to wear them out. My dad's always, Dude, you're, you're breaking too hard. Slow down. <laughs> slow down. <laughs> well, he's, you know, I'm trying to teach you. now. Use your brakes hard as you want. Uh, I beat the crud out of my power stop brakes because uh, we're putting a different, a different uh, compound here. So I'm just going to hit this with a little bit more brake clean. 
And that just gets all the gunk and residue. Yeah, brake dust, residue, stuff like that out of there, out of our way. I like to keep it kind of tidy and clean. I get a little carried away, <laughs> but I always feel it's better to be that way than to just have a junky old looking <laughs> thing. All right, so if you would, grab our new rotor off the bench and those new brake pads. On these surfaces, you want to keep those kind of pristine. So if you, when you handle the, the we can have more brake cleaner, so okay. we'll be able to clean, <laughs> but it's a good practice to get into. Okay. So, so let's go ahead and put that on there. And that's just, it'll line right up in the lugs and it'll just slide right on there. This way. Yep. Now I'm going to come in just to hold it in place and put one of our lug nuts. And so that'll just keep it in place for us. Grab our caliper, undo our bungee. And we'll get these in place, get them started. These go to 91 foot pounds, and so I just <laughs> set our wrench up for that. It's good thing somebody here knows that. There you go, and so as soon as you hear that, that means that you're at the tightness. Perfect. It just makes that click, and then you're And that's how you know, yeah, you're, you're there, so. I've never used one of those. <laughs> <laughs> Today's gonna, you're gonna, today's first, you're gonna <laughs> jump all the way in. <laughs> You need to put a high temperature grease on your pads. And that goes through like that. See how that goes through there? I got to get my glasses. Uh, on your head. <laughs> <laughs> now this side is actually ugh, done. It's done, just so, like that. Just like that. All right, before we actually button to the other side, I want you to hop in the driver's seat and pump the brake pedal gently for me a few times, and then that will push the pads back together yeah. and get the fluid back down in there. Go ahead and pump, hold it. Yeah, see how the, the thing won't turn now? There you go. Cool. All right, driver's side's done. Passenger side. Rolling. So you're up. Ready to do this? All right, I'm ready. But okay. before we get like into the meat of this, I'm yeah. checking out your garage, <laughs> and oh, <laughs> <laughs> we've got a mysterious fluid with not beer. <laughs> well, okay, so every garage has its like kind of uh, setup of things. This is just how I know. This is my the coolant for you know the Mustang, and I just on like this used to be a water bottle but it's not drinkable so i have not beer which means not for humans so i won't be tempted to drink it that's a, a good labeling system yeah it I, works that's smart i think that's what the cdc recommends i haven't ever drank coolant yet in garage or motor oil or anything so not beer, beer. You know, just so the viewers at home understand what's going on, can you just give us a quick rundown of, of, of the, the procedure real so fast? So first you're going to want to pull the little wire out, pull the pins out, pull the little stainless steel spring thing out, pads out. And then from okay. there we'll go. All right. Let's off first, actually, grab that can of brake cleaner and uh, pull the little tray underneath it a little bit and then just kind of give it a good spray. I'll, I'll stand over here, watch your eyeballs. If you want some safety some glasses safe, here. I got safety squints. Okay, you have safety squints. <laughs> Don't be uh, stingy, go for it. I have a, <laughs> Lucas actually sent me over several cans of that. I may even send you home with one. <laughs> All right, so grab your needle nose and pull that little wire pin out. All right. And now see if you can pull the, uh, one of the, pin, move the pins, give them a tap. So gentle. There you go. All right, now use your, use your needle nose to grab the end of that. There it is. And then that little spring will come off. Boom. There easy. you go. Boom. Easy peasy. Now this is gonna take a little bit of effort since uh, those bolts usually are on there pretty hard. So you're gonna have to get a little bit of leverage. There we go. All right, so now while you're there, go ahead and do the bottom bolt as okay. well. Okay. <laughs> That's a good sound. That means okay. it's coming loose. You know where I come from, <laughs> breaking isn't a good sound. There you go. Okay. So now we should be able to switch over. Exactly. Back. Exactly. Okay. This just so then, comes right off. Then give it a little pop. But. Mm. There you go, yeah. <laughs> it's that intent. Like the wrenches know. If you don't have in, the right intent, they're like, eh, he doesn't mean it. He doesn't want it, you know? And this is what's cool about this kid. Okay, he's not a kid. How old are you? Uh, 22 now. 22 now, but he's still a kid, right? Uh, so 
you set it into your mind, you're gonna walk from the Mexico American border up to the Canadian American border in one one go. One in go. <laughs> Who? Why? Okay, I love that you did that, and I'm glad that you set it up. You trained. You did the thing. <laughs> what was? What did you get from that? Because what I'm leading to is that not only did he do that all the way through successfully, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and pre-brag. You went ahead and got himself what the hikers call the triple crown. Is that right? Yep, the triple crown of hiking. He got the triple crown of hiking, which means he ride, he hiked the Pacific Crest Trail, the Appalachian Appalachian Trail and the Continental Divide Trail. <laughs> Straight through all of them. That's amazing, right? Come on. Like I could not do that. I couldn't I, mean, I don't want to yeah, and I couldn't it, do that. It's only 8,000 miles of walking, but who's counting really? Humble brag. That's not even a humble brag. That's just a full on flex right there. Uh, good for you. <clears throat> Tell me about what you feel on the trail when you go and do something like that. Am I like taking that. this thing all the way out? Yeah, go ahead okay. and set those out and <laughs> set those down. Because we're remember, we're going to put a little Loctite and put those back in when we yeah. do reinstall those. I'm sitting here, I have to tell you, I'm sitting here looking at your truck going, okay, we're going to polish the headlights, we're going to put those struts on there that you need. Um, I, just, I love this truck and it, it deserves all this love. Uh, I love it too, you know, it's... She ain't the fastest, she ain't the newest, but she gets me where I need to go. And is cool as heck. It just has that, that just right middle school. It's not old school, but it's middle school cool. All right, so what did you get on the trails that, that kind of kept you, that engrossed you, that once you got out there, right? Like there's probably some fear, a little bit of like unknown. All right, so pull that off and then we'll hook that through the bungee. There you go. And then the pads will just fall out the bottom like they did on me. So put that through. And then you just want to make sure to not put a lot of strain on that rubber that rubber hose there. What did you find on the trail that, that was the, the thing? I'm really curious about this because I don't like hiking. It takes too long. I need a motorcycle, a mountain bike, or a off now. I'm a four by four guy. So what about it? Um. I guess I, I really, I found camaraderie. Uh, that was probably my favorite thing out there. I was, I, well, I was 18 years old out there, like the first time going out into the world. That was kind of exciting. But I met people from all over the world. I was the only American in my group uh, twice. So that was kind of neat to hear stories and just how life yeah. gets lived everywhere else. Wow. Every day you see something more beautiful than the day before. You're looking at a mountain, you're like, wow, that's the most beautiful mountain I've ever seen. Nothing will top that. And then the next day, well, that, nah, that mountain yesterday was ugly looking compared, compared to, to this new one. Wow. <laughs> so just little things like that that okay. are awesome. <laughs> now, did you uh, uh, have some any wildlife encounters? On the, let's just cover the Pacific Crest Trail first. I saw 11 rattlesnakes in one day while going well, <laughs> hiking down into Cajon Pass, trying to get to McDonald's. Right here? Yeah. Wow. Oh <laughs> 11 gosh. rattlesnakes in one day. As my friend was saying, you know, it's usually days like this that are sunny and windy where I see rattlesnakes. Oh and there's a God. rattlesnake going between his legs as he's saying that. Holy mackerel. That day I, I saw 11 of them. Any close calls or just do you see them and go, ooh, geez, uh, They were like that. right there on trail, nothing, you give them their space. And, and they do the, yeah. Yeah. So. Um, I never saw any bears, which I thought was weird. Yeah. A couple of times I was hiking. Because you sleep on the ground on the trail. Oh yeah, 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 you're That's out the part there. To, to, I don't know, I, I camp, I'm a glamper. <laughs> I'm in the rooftop tent. I'm an air mattress. <laughs> you like anything you carry and just sleep on the ground exactly, on the pad. Exactly, yeah. Wow. yeah. Like I was hiking one day and I was waiting for a friend to catch up. I was listening to my music and I was like, oh, I'll sit on this log and wait for them. And I take my headphones out, just waiting. I hear somebody coming up the trail and it's some guy I had never seen before. He's like, hey, did you see that bear right there? <laughs> no, <laughs> had my headphones in, listen to music and podcasts. Wow. Missed that. That's crazy. <laughs> so here, give me that. That is our rotor and we'll do a little forensic files on it. Basic, you know, look at it, it's kind of got the same patterns on a little heat mark in the middle, other than that, in really good shape. So, you know, has like nice even wear. Grab some brake spray, there's two bottles right there. There you go, keep spraying all inside there, all those pistons, get, it, get all that stuff nice and clean. What it'll do is the first bit of that spray will help start to act as solvent and then the continued spray will start moving the, the stuff out of the way. There you go, see how much black is coming off there? Yeah. That's good. <laughs> Keep going. I'm gonna have you 
push the pistons back inside the caliper. So you'll grab one of your old pads and the blue clamp. So you can do that on that side, and then flip the pad to the other side, and then do the same thing. Okay. Get your hands cleaned off. I'm gonna be inbound with the new rotor. So go ahead and take that, and I, now is a good time to start practicing good RPP, <laughs> rotor protection protocol. So remember just to avoid putting grease smudges on it now that you'll have to clean off later. Get that on there, and then we'll grab two lug nuts and that impact, and we'll snug them down. There you go. Get that little bit of Loctite in that blue bottle there. Put a couple drops on the end of the two bolts there. Now get that, slide that in place, and you'll see where the two holes go on the bracket there, right? Just like that on the bottom, just like that on the top. Put the bolt in there, and just get his finger started there. There we go. Got that one? Yeah. Good. And the same bolts you just snug down, okay. get a good bite on them, and then just where your hand grips on the end of that wrench there, there you go, just and then just lift up there until you hear, feel the, there you go, boom. Just like that. Just I'm... like that. Whoa. You just torqued your first bolt. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a regular grease monkey You now. are, you're doing it. You're like, you're a man of the mountains and now a man of steel, man of the cars. Uh, let's see, so for this one, we should... it might okay. be a tricky reach, but it should get, just get it. Perfect. Whoa. Got it. <laughs> Done. I like this thing. Yeah, those things are, it's cool. <laughs> and this is not weird at all, kids at home. <laughs> it's not. It's only as weird if you make it weird. Now it feels like, like rocket science now. Yeah, well, you'll have a whole different understanding. The whole cool thing about sharing a mechanical uh, installer and knowledge, and that's why I love doing these videos, is that the people that watch it who may not have ever done this, you have a different understanding of these parts <laughs> on your vehicle, and I think that's a cool thing yeah. to have. All right, so now let's just put the spring steel back in and the pins. There we go. You All got right. it? Outsides, then in. <laughs> oh. Looking good. Let's say we got it. Cool. There you go. <laughs> Front. Fronts are done and fronts are that easy. That's actually kind of one of the fun things. You know, we struggle through this, but it's really quite simple and a, an easy, fun thing to do, right? It definitely wasn't as hard as I thought it would be. Though. Yeah, you that did was, it. That was fun. I had, I had fun doing that. Yeah. That wasn't the hardest thing I think I've ever done. I mean, we'll know when I, if it worked, if I step on the brakes We'll find later out in a then... little bit, yeah. <laughs> the thing stops or it won't stop. We'll yeah. find out. All right, so the... The rear, we're gonna kind of bust through this really quick and I'm gonna kind of show them how this works. And there's a lot of stuff. It's a little intimidating to just look at a giant bag full of stuff here. There's a lot of junk right there. Like a million piece puzzle I <laughs> never want to do. <laughs> yeah, don't blame you. It's coming. Oh yeah. All right, so we're gonna get rid of that. And I'd say time to clean. What do you think? Let's, I think we could use a little bit of maintenance. Yeah, let's <laughs> clean this thing off. We'll just, since uh, my friends at PowerSock kicked in the braking parts and my friends at Lucas, thanks Lucas, Lucas kicked in the brake cleaner. So, <laughs> thank you. Boy, it actually cleans up pretty nice in there. Yeah, that wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Yeah, that was all just dust. So that you can see the two pads have a, a bit of a uniqueness to them. So this one's slightly larger here and on this side, and then this one has this little mounting tab for the parking brake system here. So we'll just grab that. We'll put all our old parts. Are you memorizing how this is coming apart? I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just a, a half turn or a quarter turn, and that pulls those springs out. And those just kind of are what you call the, the pad retainers. <laughs> and then there's a billion parts falling and everywhere. Now you just have to do the reverse of that. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> and then this will come off there. You remembering how all this goes? Oh yeah, I, eidetic memory. I, I can... Got it dialed? <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh boy, I'm glad someone does. <laughs> now that I'm doing brake stuff, 
Tell me about what it is you get from hiking. That's a good one. Right? Like, <laughs> how, so here's the deal. Mechanic, doing mechanic work is sometimes fun, sometimes thankless. You know what I mean? But there's always a kind of a reward that you're doing maintenance that needs to be done or upgrades or things like that. So um, what about hiking kept you going back? Like you obviously suffered a bit. You know what I mean? Like it yeah. wasn't all just glorious. Nope. Oh, look at the flowers, look at the whatever. It was like hard. Yeah, right? there were lots of days that just sucked. <laughs> like a lot of rain or snow or dodging lightning, uh, just some hard mile days, but like what would be a hard mile day for you? What would be that? Um, like a normal day is like 25 to 30 miles a day. So once you get kind of beyond 30 miles a day, then you're kind of pushing it. It's, you got a long day ahead of you. Uh, would there, there are days that you knew that you were gonna do that? Yeah. Yeah, some days when you want to get to town sooner, that means you get to the, the McDonald's faster. Right. <laughs> you get to a shower faster. Yeah, you do bigger mile days to, to get where you want to be a little quicker. <laughs> um, but I guess um, I just I loved meeting new people out there every day it was it was a total blast. So that's the second time you said, mentioned that. So it, the people was meeting the people is one is one of the biggest. That's I think what I get out of it. Yeah, is meeting people and not just from the United States, other countries yeah, too, right? Yeah, from all over the world. You meet somebody in one day and you just hike with them for a bit. You get to know them, and then later that day you're. You're sharing a hotel room with them. You just you know people so quickly. It's a bizarre experience to meet somebody and then All of a sudden, go to dinner with them. There's like this intimacy. Share a hotel yeah. room with them. Yeah, yeah, just from the day one of meeting them. <laughs> like it speeds everything up. I've still talked to people I've met uh, in 2016 on my first hike. I still talk to them weekly. You just become lifelong friends with these people you meet out there. <laughs> So that's pretty cool. I yeah. mean, that's really cool, actually. You ventured yeah. out alone for your first one, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I just didn't know anybody else out there. I just got dropped off at the Mexican border and started walking north. <laughs> that seems crazy to me. How long does an 800 mile? How many days or months or years? Like, what would you plan to be away for that? I think for me to like enjoy, it, I think like like two months, a month and a half to two months. So that's like 20-ish miles a day, some zeros in town. So you get to town, you, you hike zero miles, that's a zero. So a few of those to just kind of relax, recuperate, and get back out there. I think like a month and a half, two months, something like that. You need me to hold anything in place? Not right now, not yeah. yet. <laughs> Wait till the cussing starts. <laughs> we have some kids that live right across the street, next door to you, right across the street from me. And they're, they're awesome, my awesome little helpers. And so I always actually try to keep those times when I am losing my mind <laughs> and cussing down to a minimum for their sake. Okay, that looks like it's in place. Got one. All right. Okay. Please tell me we got that. We did. Perfect. Now they got the lowdown on hiking from you. So I'm going to go ahead while I had my greasy mitts all over these pads, wrestling with those to put those in. I'm just going to spray this down with a degreaser. Um, this stuff actually smells even better than the, the brake cleaner. I like that. And so we'll clean that off. That is looking pristine. And now once he's ready with that, we'll put the drum on and I'll show you guys how to adjust the parking brake. So then to adjust the parking brake on this thing, it's basically, ouch, 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 fingers. <laughs> you got 10 of them. <laughs> I got some spares. <laughs> the way that I've done that in the past is that you do it till where there's just a constant, nice, consistent bit of drag on it. So we'll just. There we go. Oh. Perfect. Oh, that's it. 
Perfect. There you go. Brakes done. Yeah. Finally. <laughs> now, finish the other side, tire rotation, and a test drive. <laughs> so now that we have the brakes kind of done, we have to go test drive it. So that now we got to get the wheels back on, wheels and tires back on. And we're going to do what I like to do on my 4x4 uh, normal two-wheel drive vehicles. And that's what I call, it's a rear cross, where you take your front tires and you cross them over to the rear, and the rear tires go straight to the front. So. I'm gonna take your rear tire okay. and put it on the front. You're gonna take the front tire that was over there that we have in the driveway and put it on there. Okay. Ready? Can do. Break! <laughs> Go! To <It's a> race! <laughs> How's it going back there? It's going. There we go. Boom! I win! <laughs> Wait a minute, that's not fair. <laughs> it's totally fair. I don't know what you're doing back here. <laughs> and then once we get the truck on the ground, we'll get the torque wrench out and lock those down. But awesome. right now, let's get the other side done and get it on the ground. Cool. All right, so we're, do we're teaching the next generation the tow lift for the <laughs> 4x4 tires. Now, these tires are on the verge of not really needing that much, but you got it. Take it away. <laughs> All right, so. So lift with your toes and then just spin and position it with your fingers. I feel like. Can you see there where the go. lugs are? Everything yeah. good? Yep. I feel like a regular mechanic now. Oh, you're totally getting it. <laughs> That's what you're doing. Shoot Step hard. down for the first time. Looks like it stops faster. <laughs> <laughs> So then we'll just come in here and do the same thing. Okay, and I'll do a start pattern on this too. It doesn't really matter. You're on your own. Okay. Take us the rest of the way. All right. Well, how did you think of the experience of the, the, the learning part of it? I enjoyed it, yeah. yeah. It was, wasn't you could... too bad. You were a good instructor. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so we have the basics done. The, the brake install is done. <laughs> And now I'm gonna send you out with these instructions and they come with this and it's basically, you're gonna run through a series of stops. So you're gonna do, as it says here, it's very easy, five stops from 40 to 10 miles per hour and then five stops from 35 to five miles per hour and then just drive around. And then what I recommend is go up to Golden Valley Road mm -hmm. you have that long stretch of no yeah. traffic signals. And so that's where I go, make sure that you have no traffic. That's yeah. the one good thing about <laughs> quarantine is, uh, <laughs> So go out and do that, and then we'll talk to you and see how the brakes perform. All right, sounds good. Well? I think so, I think we got it. Nice. <laughs> So tell me about the, in, the install. You, the, you're happy with the upgrade? I think so, yeah definitely beats the, the stock Toyota ones I've had on there for 20 years yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. Now what about the uh, actual install itself? Did you like wrench in, get a little dirty? Like yeah, your that hands was, are dirty? Yeah, that was, I, I feel like a regular grease monkey. I could, uh, I'm sure any, any shop will hire me now that I've done this once. Sure, sure they will. Uh, I would hire you. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm really glad that you like, really wanted to do this. It was nice to be able to, you know, do ha do something fun on the block and have some good, yeah. you know, learn a little bit, grow a little bit, get out of your comfort <laughs> yeah, zone a little definitely. bit. Uh, getting the back drums on was a bit of a challenge for both of us, yep. but uh, uh, we did it. And I'm super stoked that you liked it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for, of course. for helping me with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Until next time, enjoy your drive.